praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Before I begin, um, Purdue, would you come up here? You can go back to your seat. And Franciscan, right next to you. There we go. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> the one holding the crozier there, do you sense any electricity going through that right now? Like you, a lightning bolt's going to happen one of these days? Okay, no, I'm not the younger version of Gandalf, so don't worry about that. And how about that miter? Do you see speakers in there that come right from heaven, that information to me? No. They're symbolic of who I am. But there's much more to my role as a shepherd or a bishop. Now, you see, at the beginning of the homily, I decided to innovate. And then I took, or I took initiative. And it's hope for me that through this homily and through the imagery you've seen here, that I also will inspire God's work. The three eyes. I, I say that because we live in a world of acronyms, especially you do. You know, BFF, LOL, and believe me, it's well beyond my pay grade to know a lot of them. I, the emojis, I'm still learning in them. Sometimes I send the wrong ones. That's, <laughs> thank goodness it hasn't ended up on Facebook yet. But no, what's important here, though, it's easier for us to remember things, like WWJD, what would Jesus do? That was the initial. I'd like for us to go deeper, though. WWJD, walk with Jesus daily, because we can't share he who we do not know. That's critical. I learned a lot of these acronyms from my first assignment as a pastor. And I was a pastor up in uh, Shelby Township in Michigan. <laughs> now, is this the, uh, the eparchy of St. Thomas the Apostle? For those of you who do not know the eparchy of St. Thomas the Apostle, this would be the, our brothers and sisters in the Chaldean Rite. And please know all of your relatives who are still back in Iraq, know that they are in our prayers and certainly to keep Christianity growing. And please tell Bishop Francis I say hello up there, okay? I remember him when he was Father Frank. And he remembers me when I was Father Jeff. Although we still are, sort of, aren't we? No, it's very important. I see that I, I yearn back to my first pastorate at St. Therese, or St. Therese in Shelby Township back in 2005. And our young adults, our youth group, came up with an idea. They innovated. They decided that they were going to pray morning prayer Monday morning before they went to school. Now, had I told them that this would be a great idea for us in the parish, that you young people will come to church Monday morning, how many would show up? Probably zip, except for me, and back then I was still young, sort of. It came from them. They innovated. They initiated it, and then more and more people showed up, more and more young people. They inspired them. They took the initiative. You see, that is critical with regard to who you and I happen to be. Jesus shows us today what it means to be the leaven, what it means to be the bread of life. Jesus, as God, Son of God, innovates, he initiates, he inspires. The three eyes. And it's been said that 
Faith is the leaven of innovation and creativity. Bishop Monforton, what do you mean? Thanks for asking. You see, yeast is a leaven for bread. Necessary, we've learned in science, necessary for fermentation. Critical for growth. No leaven, no growth. And so people full, replete with faith, grow to the fullness. Here in our gospel passage today is people full of faith, yearning to hear Jesus' words gather around him with potential growth. But Jesus saw they lacked one thing, direction. They had no spiritual GPS. Now, of course, that acronym was not used 2,000 years ago. But where's your spiritual GPS? To whom do you look? Jesus reset their spiritual GPS in a way that only the Son of God can. He said it so that they would recognize a loving, a caring shepherd. Through loving guidance, loving guidance, the driving force of the gospel is the source for our own renewal. No one's ever young, too young to renew their lives. No one's ever too old. We always possess spiritual potential to be actualized through the grace of the gift of God. Most certainly that's actualized at the seven gifts of confirmation. Those gifts that grow and are realized throughout our lives, our adult lives. Our renewal begins with the ability to be able to accept all God has to offer us without condition. Without condition. Our Lady Mary's words were fiat voluntas tua. Let it be done to me according to thy word. She didn't sleep on it. She didn't say, well, I'll get back to you maybe in a few years. She answered, yes. Many of you out here right now aren't really certain what you're going to be doing five or ten years from now. You're still trying to figure that out. I'll give you a word of encouragement. Good. Listen. Recognize the Lord is talking to you in your prayer life and through so many people with whom you encounter, your friends, your family, the religious, your pastors or associate pastors. They're all out there for you to help adjust your spiritual GPS when it comes to your vocation. In our first reading, the prophet Jeremiah perceptively points out how it is, in his time, the shepherds, both political and religious, and oftentimes that melded together, they shirked their responsibilities for their own personal benefit. Hey, it even happens here in 2018. Every one of us priests, bishops for that matter, recognize that there is always that temptation to sit on that ivory tower. Is it not, my brothers? It does get out there because people shower compliments on us. They'll say things like, good homily, Father. Of course, we all know that's code for good morning, Father. Because if you ask, what did you like about it, you may get somebody quite embarrassed. It's all about Jesus. At the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, it's all about Jesus. And yet, we hear most certainly from the prophet Jeremiah, God will never, ever leave us even when you and I try to leave him. And we do. We sin, we transgress. We put ourselves, our own desires, before God's will. St. Paul, in his letter to those in Steubenville, making sure you're not sleeping yet, 
St. Paul says that we have been bought. And we have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. God has initiated, we respond. Yes, the fact that Jesus calls us, all of us, is one thing. But how you and I respond is another. Jesus is the good shepherd. I like to mention, as I mentioned to my brother priests before we came out here, that with the readings this weekend is sort of like Good Shepherd Weekend Part 2. How to do and how not to do. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. How to do. And as fellow Christians, we have been called to be missionary disciples. All of us, everyone out here has been called to be that missionary disciple. And while it is a catchphrase, it's hollow if we do not walk with Jesus daily. That's critical. No energy going through that crozier yet, is there? No electricity? Okay, good. My brothers and sisters, this now begins with you. It begins here. You are not static observers but living, dynamic ambassadors. It begins here. It begins with Jesus. It begins in receiving Jesus with an open heart, an open mind, and a welcoming soul. Yes, Jesus reveals himself to you in prayer, in the sacraments, especially in the Eucharist, And yes, at confession, the sacrament of penance, and in one another, your friends, those with whom you encounter, your family. My sisters and brothers, today the Good Shepherd teaches us that if we only maintain at least a daily attitude of humble availability and openness to Jesus himself, We will hear him. In the end, it comes to those three eyes. As you leave here, you need to ask yourselves, how may I innovate? How may I initiate? And how may I inspire? So how about we do this? What's the first eye? Innovate. The second... The third, fantastic. God bless you. Amen.